Tested. Hey guys, Will from Tested. I'm Norm. Uh, we're here today to upgrade our MakerBot. In my right hand, I'm it's holding old, old it's, and busted. It's, it's our old plastered Mark IV. It served us well for the last what, like four yes, months. Yes, it was very tough to build. It's a pain in the ass to build. It's constantly breaking. Basically, we're looking for change. So that's what we're doing in this box right here. I don't know if you can see that, but. That is the Plastreader Mark V. It's the latest model. It's a lot of stainless steel construction. Basically, this idler wheel thing that you can't see. Actually, you can't see it. It's right here. This thing keeps breaking, and it's always a pain in the ass. This one doesn't have that. It replaces it with like a spinny bolt or something. This looks nothing like that. No, it's it's that's not put together yet. But oh. we're going to do that now. Okay. We're back. Um, we just fitted the thumb screws onto the M5 bolts, uh, really super crooked. I did it with a hammer and a wall. Probably a vise would have been a better way to do that, as the instructions said. But that's what that is. Now, if you watch us build the first ma the MakerBot, uh, well, well, it's time for nut slots to make their first appearance. Yeah, would nuts, you like to explain the magic of nut slots? The nuts. This is a nut slot. Yeah, so the nut slot, you slide the nut in here, like so. Pretty exciting stuff, except for I'm not getting it in. There we go. And then what happens, yeah, is you attach something else to that by screwing a bolt into that nut, and it cinches the whole thing down nice and tight. So, uh, obligatory nut slot joke goes here. Repeat. Nut slot. Nut slot. Nut slot. slot. It's a funny word. Nuts. Yeah. Where you we have lots of nuts. nuts and some It's slots. important to know where to put your nuts, is what I've always said. Right, let's tape your nut slots. Tape. <laughs> you can tape your nut slots. The instructions. So. Oh, oh, which, oh, oh, that wasn't a joke. Okay, okay so, so I have tape. tape. All right, I have scotch tape. tape up all the nut slots. So, so how you feeling, Norm? Where are we right. at? We get the the motor attached to the. This is the here. filament pusher yes. assembly. It has a little gear. Filament feeds in here and comes out the bottom. Comes to the top, comes to the bottom. So instead of the dynos from the previous version, yes. the big dyno and the small dyno, yes. this time we have an arch. Yes. It's the arch deluxe. I like the arch deluxe. Have you glued stuff? There's glue involved here, right? There's going to be glue involved. We're on that step next, and I am on the step where I put the motor in and that. to here. This is actually the new nozzle. It's made of stainless steel, I think, instead of brass, which is what the old one was. So it should be a little bit less corrosive. Um, and the neat thing about this is there's no PTFE thing. So this big white tube on the old one, I don't know if you can see that, but this guy right here has a tendency to warp and melt under heat because there's a hot element, heat, you know, hot, hot brass tube inside that thing. What we're doing is taking that completely out of the equation. We're going to put this, this red thing inside this, and the hole in the red thing is exactly the right size for the filament. So there's no opportunity for it to warp or bend. It, you know, as it prints and as it's used. So, theoretically, this should last a lot longer and be a lot less fiddly than fiddlier. A lot less fiddlier, is that even a word? Fiddlier. Fiddlier than the old one. So, we'll let you know how it goes. Mark five. Mark five. So what I'm doing right now is uh, stripping this little wire. It's a special, I think it's PTBE wire. It has a different kind of sheath uh, or insulator than the normal wire, so gonna, it can withstand higher temperatures. What it's gonna do is deliver power to these two guys. These are great big resistors, and what they do is heat the whole barrel to get to the right temperature to make the, you know, the plastic molten and blobby and come out right. Problem is, this wire has a specially tricky insulator. You can't really use a wire stripper on it. You just have to use a sharp knife and kind of be real careful and work your way around the edges. And to make things even more difficult, since it threads through, if you want to have something that looks nice, you actually run uh, the run it through one end. Hold on, I'm trying to thread here, it's a little difficult. And then you put the connector and you solder it, so you break the insulator in the middle of the wire. It's a pretty significant challenge. Uh, I think I'm up to the task, but we'll let you know how it goes. <laughs>
So um, while soldering, I wasn't paying attention and touched my hand with the soldering iron. Turns out that burns like a motherfucker. It is really hot. So be careful when you're soldering. It's where I'm wearing goggles. I'm going to finish tincturing the thermistor. I've done this before. I really hate this. It's the fiddliest part of the whole thing. Basically, you have to take this little tiny guy right here, get a little bit of solder on the edges without letting the two wires that are almost infinitesimally close to each other touch. Um, and, and I mean, it's just fiddly and bad. It's the thing that they're going to replace. My finger really hurts. I'm going to go back and finish this. Uh, we built the uh, plastruder assembly. Uh, everything looks pretty good. We're going to use the electronics from our old board, so that, that stays the same. But there's an addition. We have to add this relay board because the new heater draws a lot more power than the old one. These two big resistors right here. So we're going to build this relay board, this guy right here, which involves a lot of soldering and small fiddly work, um, which is kind of, it, 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 it'll draw the power. Um, the, the other board will turn this one on and off and tell it when to supply the big power when we need to turn the motor or they turn the heaters on and off. Okay, so we've made the relay board, the plastruder's built more or less. Um, what we're going to do now is take the old plastruder off the old platform, put the new one on, uh, hook up the, the Arduino controller, the microcontroller, and the relay board. Um, the good news is we'll be able to use the relay for the heated build platform when we put that on. I think next week probably is the plan for that, so uh, we'll stay tuned. So we're not going to name any names or pointy fingers, but somebody uh, put it on upside down. We'll put it back together. Going to put it back in, and I got to wire up the electronics. And we should be ready to give it a test spin. Tighten it with the. Uh, I'm going to tighten it. The Allen wrench. Yeah. Whew, almost lost the nut there. The nut almost fell out of the nut slot. Those jokes never get old. Joey laughs every time. That's all I'm saying. Ta-da. So we're, we are so close. ever so close. So very close. But my dog is waiting at home, and it's time to go home. So we're going to finish up tomorrow morning. Uh, stay tuned. and, and it's in here. It's ready to go. We're on the cusp of ready. Electronics. So um, we're back. Uh, the MakerBot is warming up. Yeah, that smells like burning. Deep. You smell what the MakerBot's cooking? I don't know if that's good. Basically, what's happening now is the grease that we use to lube up the the plastic shaft. The you have funny hair right now. The 
the, the, the heater thing is burning off. This is to be expected. I don't know if you can see the smoke. I mean, I'll put my hand behind it. Does that, does it show? Okay, you can see it. So um, it's making a kind of impressive smell. We're, we're glad that there's no smoke alarms down here in the basement. So uh, see it pretty hot. Yeah, we're almost up to temperature. One of the things to note is the Mark V takes a lot longer to heat up because the resistors are bigger and you don't have the coil of the nichrome around the barrel. So there's more heating, there's more mass to warm. So it's been warming up for about five, six minutes now. It's only at 186 degrees. We're shooting for 220. So, um, well, let's you know, stay tuned. There we go. We're back. Uh, printing was, what, I guess moderate success? It doesn't look like a cube to me. It's well, it's kind a of kind of a rectangular, oblong, squarish yes. object. Turns out we didn't put in enough plastic. I, I, I ran out of it, plastic. We ran out, but yeah. uh, the resolution does seem to be very good. There's definitely some kinks to work out. Yes, I think the temperature needs polished. to be adjusting. It seems like... Um, this is the old cube from the old yes. bus shooter. This is the, we printed a bigger cube where we tried to. If I had to guess, I would say our temperatures are a little bit off and that we're, our, our new thermistor is running a little, uh, re registering a little cooler, which means that the, you know, the temperature is a little higher than it so thinks it is. It's a little goopy. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll, we'll dial tweak. it in a little bit more, tweak, test, keep going. But the build is a success. Huge success. And yes. our plus shooter MP4 will be where it's higher. Well, we can save that motor. We can use that for something else. So, uh, so yeah. So that's it. We built the Plast Shooter MK5, put it on our MakerBot, made our MakerBot a better MakerBot, and, and that's it for Tester Than Will. See ya.